Okay, so <laughs> I have made it to like the most famous sea stack in all of Denmark. It's also kind of the only sea stack in all of Denmark, but nevertheless, it's a beautiful sea stack. I hope you can hear me because I have the wind howling straight towards me. I've come out to the sea stack, especially tonight, because the weather is just fantastic. So we have the wind coming in from the sea, which is out here, coming in and hitting the sea stacks here. So I have lots of wave action. And on top of that, look at these clouds, almost like mammoth clouds. So the sun is setting behind this cliff. There is a single cloud up here, but as you can see, it's mainly clear sky. So right now I'm photographing from this perspective, which sadly is not my favorite perspective. But I think all in all, it's probably the better choice right now. I do want to get down to the lower perspective also, which is down here on this beach here. But right now I'm just shooting <laughs> With the wide angle lens, waves coming in here, hitting, so I get also get sea spray in here on top of my camera. So I'm also trying to like cover the lens. I'm in full manual mode. I'm shooting at f13, simply just to match a shutter speed that I want, 1 16th of, sixth of a second, ISO 100. So I get a little bit of that motion. I'm just trying a whole lot of different shutter speeds, simply just to get as much motion and blur as absolutely possible here. So it's a little bit chaotic and a little bit hard to vlog at the same time. So uh, yeah, I, I will focus on actually getting a photo that, that I like here. So I've made it to the lower angle and it looks <laughs> incredible. This is like way better than what I could have hoped for. Absolutely, oh, so good. It's like literally the first evening of our vacation over here. And I managed to get a sky like this, like, come on. Uh, and that just goes to show, even though you're on a vacation, like jump on the possibilities when they happen to you. So. The sea stack is actually called the camel heads. Kind of makes sense with this shape. It's a very characteristic rock. Like, you know, it's, it's not something you see every day. Then we also have this amount of rocks over here. They're called the lion head. And uh, yeah, well, I would say camel head is probably better. This part here kind of also looks like a little grizzly bear. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a little bit like just trying to get everything in. Right now, shooting at f16, ISO 100, shutter speed of quarter of a second, maybe a little bit more, uh, dependent on, yeah, whatever, how, how the waves behave. There's not really a big uh, crazy system to this. I'm just trying to like, you know, jump on every possibility there is. Uh, getting the water while it's coming back out through the rocks and catching the water when it's coming toward me. A little bit of everything all around and yeah, wave. Aha! So...
what an evening and what a sky. The two first photos definitely have the most dramatic skies, but there are really no question that the lower angle is the more impressive angle to photograph this sea stack from. And ironically, even though I got this dramatic and colorful sky, I gotta admit I actually think I prefer the moody and bluer composition on the right hand to the colorful composition on the left hand. I am not sure though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Which do you prefer, the colorful or the moody? As all Danes know, there are no cliffs in Denmark, no waterfalls and no sea stacks either. And that is actually completely wrong, because on a small island in the Baltic Sea called Bornholm, which is very much a part of Denmark, you can actually find all of that. Due to the island's extremely important strategic location in the Baltic Sea, its history goes far back beyond the Bronze Age. Through many conflicts, mainly with Sweden, always Sweden, Bornholm ended up on Danish hands in 1660 and has been so ever since. Bornholm is probably most famous for smoked herring and all around Bornholm in the small towns you can't avoid seeing all the old smoke houses which are still running today and usually works as restaurants. They come highly recommended. Bornholm is also known for their round churches which are not unique to Bornholm but they do have four of the seven round churches placed around Denmark. In the middle of Bornholm you will find a big forest called Elmeningen. It has several different iconic locations, one of which is called Echo Valley. You have one guess why that is. Sadly I didn't get to go on a dedicated photography outing here, but I definitely found several potentially great photography spots. And speaking of which, if composition is something you struggle with, be sure to pick up my ebook on that topic, minimal text, loads of examples to emphasize my points, and I even have a follow-up if you enjoyed the first one. Thanks for all the 5 star reviews to all of you who already got the ebooks. There are of course links down in the description and if you sign up for my newsletter you can get access to the free light version. The largest waterfall in Denmark can also be found in Bornholm. However, when we visited it, it was in a very sad state as it was more or less completely dried out due to it being a relatively dry summer. Another very famous location in Bornholm is located on the cliffs just above the Camel Heads. So, I have made it to Hammers Hoops, which is the largest of the Middle Ages ruins, castle ruins we have in Denmark. It's basically also kind of <laughs> the only one. And sadly, it is far from, yeah, being showing itself it's really a ruin here like there's not a whole lot left of the castle just when we arrived i've been running around like a frantic because there's been like a huge uh, cloud with the shower on its way towards us and right now it starts <laughs> to rain so i just tried to catch it from as many angles as possible with these really really dramatic clouds So the shower has just passed and yeah, beautiful castle. The sun is kind of ish coming out now and right now I'm also like using this old bridge part here leading up to the ruins as a little bit of a foreground, trying to incorporate 
also the sky a little bit. Beautiful texture-rich clouds up there. Looks epic. And then there's some garbage down here that I'm probably just going to clone out in Photoshop. As with all ruins and castles, it's usually more fun to photograph them from afar. But when you are there, it's very well worth visiting the ruins, as you can explore the histories around the castle. This was a family vacation, and I guess I was just lucky to have that incredible cloud above the ruin when we visited. Right time, right place. Even though my time photographing Bornholm was limited, I got to scout many locations I want to visit at a more optimal time of year. I bet autumn could be incredible over here. We also came by this field which was rather full of fireweed. What a cool name in English. In Danish we just call them gedeoms. Anyway, they made for some beautiful simple flower photos with the telephoto lens. Right now I'm running a summer sale where you can get entire hundred dollars off my huge post-processing course Photoshop for Landscape Photographers. If you want to learn how I edit my photos and how I use all the sliders, luminosity masks, focus stacking, how I blend photos, clean them up, add and control atmosphere and at the same time respect the light, just follow the link in the description of the video and remember to use the coupon code to get your hundred dollars off. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment.